Hey guys, so today I'm rebuilding a Garrett GT3782V turbocharger off of a 2006 Ford F250 with a 6 liter power stroke diesel. And uh, basically everything is torn apart right now. And this is the impeller shaft right here. And uh, what seals the thing, what seals the oil is these uh, little rings right here. So they expand and uh, seat against the housing of the turbo. And then it works kind of like a labyrinth seal. Um, so the oil has to go around the ring in order to get out. And, you know, centrifugal force keeps that from happening. This is the exhaust side of the uh, rotor. And I've replaced the ring here, cleaned up this shaft, and then new bushings, the new uh, oil, oil spacer and uh, I'm getting ready to put it back into the housing. So I actually bought this uh, complete kit to rebuild this this uh, turbocharger. So on the original uh, assembly they had a one piece design for the front uh, thrust bearing and on the new aftermarket kit that I received uh, they actually split they split the collar into two pieces and then uh, yeah it actually passes through a one piece or, you know a solid uh, thrust bearing so uh, I don't know if that's better or worse So uh, there's no instructions with this, but I'm assuming that this oil passage needs to go towards this oil port right here. At least that would make sense to me. And then uh, this is the second ceiling ring right here. Okay, the, the front cover is next, and I installed a new square O-ring here, and then uh, there's no reason to, to mark these parts before you take the turbo apart, because uh, they're already marked from the factory. So you see this cast-in arrow, that points towards the top, the top is where the oil inlet is, so yeah, you don't have to worry about that. And then uh, the, the kit comes with new bolts, but I think these old ones are actually better. So these are 8mm uh, uh, or 5 16 12 point. So you will need a socket to fit those. And uh, a little bit of anti seize never hurt anybody. Alright, I'm going to pop on the impeller here. And it's a left hand thread. Okay, I couldn't find an exact spec for this turbo but I found a spec for a turbo that's fairly similar and it seemed to indicate that 12 thousandths was the maximum uh, play in the shaft and uh, yeah we're right right on about about 11 thousandths maybe 10 thousandths so that'd be good it has to have some clearance because it's a hydrostatic bearing so there has to be clearance for the oil the oil actually makes the the shaft float in the middle um, but there's probably some wear on the shaft and the housing 
so even with the new bushings it's not you know quite as tight as it was at the factory but uh, before the rebuild I had almost 30 thousandths alright so I installed a new o-ring on the outside here and then the impeller housing goes on next so same deal this is the mark right here that goes at the top and a uh, little bit of never sees on these bolts So this is the exhaust housing and uh, this steel here is called the unison ring and it basically rotates around and that's what uh, changes the, the veins on the exhaust side of the turbo and this has uh, got some problems. So see how egg shaped that slot is? That's where the little cam, the little cam rides up and down in here to rotate the, the unison ring. And it, yeah, it, yeah, that's pretty bad. And then these are the veins. Come on, focus. There we go. So you see how thin that little uh, pad is right there that rides in the unison ring? Yeah, it's over half worn through. And these are probably some kind of powdered metal, like a nickel alloy of some kind. So that's, that's not going to go much longer. Okay, the new the new unison ring and vanes are installed, and we're ready to put the put the exhaust side of the turbo back together. And again, there's no need to make any index marks because uh, there's a dowel pin that engages with this groove right here, so you you literally can only put it together one way. All right, the last thing I want to do is uh, replace this solenoid valve for the variable pitch on the turbo. They call it a VGT solenoid and uh, I don't know if this one's bad or not. I don't have a means to test it but it looks pretty crusty and a new one's not that expensive so we're gonna go ahead and swap it out. <clears throat> it's real simple. It's just a bunch of o-rings that you need to lube up and then yeah, slide her in and uh, Reinstall the bracket. Time to reinstall. You can see uh, I put new O-rings on this oil return tube here. All the exhaust connections are clean. And uh, yeah, everything's up and out of the way. So hopefully it goes back together a little faster than it came apart. I like to put a little dielectric grease on these connectors before I hook them up. And then I've got a new, new O-ring and a new gasket for the oil supply.
So uh, I should talk about briefly the the diagnosis or why I decided to do the rebuild. So I uh, have two problems. The the first problem is that the trucks had a had an issue for maybe a year or so now where uh, when the engine is warm if I accelerate from a stop sign or whatever uh, every once in a while it will fail to make uh, boost pressure until it reaches maybe like 1800 rpm and you get a lot of black smoke and basically no power and so ba what I what I feel is happening is that the the variable vanes in the turbo are not working correctly or were not working correctly and basically it wasn't allowing the turbo to spool up when it when it needed to in order to give you the power to accelerate uh, so that was step one that needed to be uh, addressed and then the other issue is that while I was fixing the glow plugs and I had the intake off I did a you know did the shake test on the on the turbo impeller and that's when I noticed that it had a lot of play so also uh, in the intake pipe and then into the first the first tube that runs through the charge air cooler it was uh, filled with oil or a film of oil so the turbo has been leaking oil on the intake side um, so the, the the rebuild kit takes care of the play in the impeller shaft and it also reseals the turbo the veins that I replaced and the solenoid should take care of my issues with the variable variable veins so uh, yeah it's really not too bad uh, the rebuild of the turbo is extremely easy I've never done one before and uh, yeah it was it was simple you don't have to worry about timing any of the components together <clears throat> the balance of the components is all done individually before the turbo is assembled so even if you take it apart and reassemble it differently you won't affect the balance of the of the impeller so yeah it's really not that bad of a job and uh, actually the hardest part is is getting the thing out of the of the engine and putting it back in that's a struggle and uh, if you watch uh, the guy on YouTube Diesel Tech Ron he has a lot of good videos about these six liter engines uh, but the funny thing about it is he's in Florida and everything seems to work a lot more smoothly for him than it does for us here in the Rust Belt so um, yeah I just I get a kick out of it watching him work in his on his trucks with no rust uh, it's not the it's not the same situation here uh, but the information is good it's just uh, you're gonna struggle a little bit more here in our location Thanks for watching.